Most High, he don't make mistakes. Uh, we don't want to slice, we gonna take the cake. Yeah. And we can't wait until the kingdom come. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldiers. I'm on the block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. What your game up like soldiers? Soldiers, soldiers. We moving wiser than cobras. Sicarius look over. Calls up a laugh like Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High God of Israel, whose true name is Yahweh, and the name is Yahweh Shai, who, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. At y'all with another Soldier Sunday. Today we're going to get into all the laws done away with. The reason we got to go into this is because our people have misunderstandings of Paul's writings, right? And they allowed us to cause them the error, right? So let's go to that. Let's go to 2 Peter 3 and 15. Bubba Kishaw. Second Peter chapter three and verse fifteen, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Go oh, keep going. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction right so paul's writings they're hard to be misunderstood because you know if while you're reading paul it sounds like he's contradicting himself you know what i mean and that's not what's going on paul's narrative was never against the doctrine of this bible right and you know even though um we see that paul is saying certain of these things but also we see paul gets rebuked and we're going to get all into these things right and you can see Paul, he might say some of these, you know, the laws are done, are done away with. All you need is grace. All you need to call on is the Lord. All you need is faith. Right. But you need which these are the things that we have. We have grace. We ha we need to have the faith. But we also need to keep these law, statutes and commandments. They're not done away with. Right. So in, in order to do that, you got to have a second witness. And Christians can't have show a second witness in this Bible that shows that these laws are done away with and anyone teaching contrary to the law, statutes and commandments. All right. Keep going. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Right. Because you're being led away from these law, statutes and commandments and you're going to fall right with the wicked, man. Because the wicked are not keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. The commitment, the, the wicked are are doing, you know, according to their own flesh. You know, they're doing what they want to do out here. And that's what you see with our people. I mean, they doing they doing exactly what the, the church is telling them to do. You ain't gotta love, you know, love thy mother and thy father, and they not loving their mother and their father. I mean, love your brother as you love yourself. They don't love their brother, they out here killing their brother. I mean, don't do no witchcraft. They out here selling drugs, doing drugs, all these things. And that's because they're being taught that they don't have to keep these laws. If they was being taught that they do have to keep these laws, you know, there would be more of us growing up into this doctrine, into the into keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which is really benefiting us, right? Let's go to Galatians 2 and 16, Bubba Kashar. Salakia, Salakia. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So uh, Christians uh, go through, a uh, go to scriptures like this, that is say, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Right? Let's go to Galatians 2 and 16, Baba Kasha. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Mashiach, even we have believed in Yahweh Mashiach. That we might be justified by the faith of Hamashiach and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So these are the misunderstandings of Paul's writings that Christians have that are that they've built their doctrine on and then that they teach to the people. Right. Because 
It's an agenda with these Christians. They know who you are. They know who they are. They know who this Bible was written to and who it was for. But their whole agenda is to keep you in sin, because if we was keeping these law, statutes and commandments, they'll be under our foot. But as long as we stay in sin, we're under the foot of these other nations. Right. Let's go to James 2 and 20. Brother Kishaw. This is James chapter 2 and verse 20. But wilt thou thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So we see James, who is so-called Jesus Christ's brother, right? He's telling us that faith without works is dead. Keep going. You on mute. Slocky, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he when he had offered Isaac his son, his son upon the altar. So Abraham, he had the faith. I mean, he he believed in the Most High, and with his faith and with the fear of the Lord, you know, because you can't have the fear of the Lord if you don't got faith in the Lord. And without having fear of the Lord, you don't have the the want or the desire to do the commandments because. Having a fear of the Lord is fearing his judgments and his judgments come when you break these laws, statutes and commandments. So we see that Abraham had faith and through his faith, you know, he showed it by his works, by bringing his son onto the altar. He was going to sacrifice his son. Keep going. Verse, verse 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. See what faith and works go hand in hand. You know, keep having a faith. You got to keep these law, statutes and commandments. And this is what makes your faith perfect. Keep going. Uh, verse 23. And a scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Keep going. Verse 24. You, you see then how how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. By works, a man is justified, not by faith only. So if we if we go according to Paul, right, this is contradicting what James just said. So who do we go to? Right. Paul never walked with Yahweh Shai. Right. James lived with Yahweh Shai. So whose word or would you take if we had to go down to, OK, this one is saying one thing. This one is teaching another. Who do we go and believe? Right. So not only do we see that James is the brother of Yahweh Shai, he's teaching that the the that faith without works is dead, but we also have multiple witnesses, including so-called Jesus Christ, that teaches us that we have to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, let's go to um, 1 John 3 and 4. Because, because what is sin? I mean, that's what we got to get into right now. Before we keep going, what is sin? It's 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for the sin, for sin is the transgression of the law. So we see that sin is the transgression of the law, right? So let's go to Ephesians 2 and 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his worksmanship, workmanship, created in Hamashiach Yahweh shall unto good works, which God, which Yahweh hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Right. So what did God ordain that we should walk in before? He ordained that we need to keep these law, statutes, and commandments. So we see that the works, doing the works, is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And we see that when we don't keep the works, we are a transgressor. We are in sin. So sin is the transgression of the law. Let's go to James 1 and 22, Bubba Kishaw. This is James chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Your, and that's what our people self. do. That's what that's what they do when they go to church on Sunday. They, they're they just hearers of the word. They're not doers of the word, right? So what is the doer of the word? Let's go to Romans 2 and 13. And we're going to see you know, since since Christians and our, you know, our people, you know, stand so boldly on beloved Paul. Let's see what Paul says. Romans chapter two and verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahweh, but the doers of the law shall be justified. 
so hearers of the word are hearers of the law and the doers of the word are doers of the law so paul now is contradicting himself right but it's not that he's contradicting himself it's that people are misunderstanding his words right so let's go to and if anybody got a point please salaki me you know what i mean because I'm, I'm trying to move i'm gonna I'm a move fast on this because i got a lot to bring out and i know y'all you know our people have a short attention span so let's go to titus three and eight because without the without without doing the law you're not doing anything to prove your faith to the most high all you're doing is being a hearer and the most high ain't looking for somebody who's just going to be hearing and not doing that's titus chapter three and verse eight this is a faithful saying and these things i will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in Yahweh might be careful to maintain maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Right. So these good works that we're doing, keeping these commandments, they are profitable unto you. So if these laws of God are profitable unto us for keeping them, why will we not keep them? Right. Let's go to Romans 10 and 4, Baba Kishore. It's Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Right. So this is so now we see we see Paul teaching one thing and now he's teaching another thing. So for Christ is the end of the law. It's not that he's teaching another thing, but Christians that have you read this and they'll say close the book and they'll start dancing and, and, and doing the doing a Harlem shake in the name of the so-called Holy Spirit that they think that they 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 moving under, right? But let's read verse five. Con verse five. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Right. So we see that Moses the, the Moses describeth the righteousness, right, which is of the law. So this is what what being righteous is. Let's start at verse one, Baba Kisha. Romans ten and one. Brethren, my heart's desire and a prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So so his desire and prayer to God is that Israel will be saved. So what's required of Israel to be saved? Keep going. Slack here. Verse verse two. For I bear them record that have that that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Our people, we have a zeal of God. We have a zeal to worship him, right? We pray, we go to church on Sundays, right? We, you know, they, you know, they they want to worship God. They believe in a God, right? In the most high God, but they just don't know how to worship him. They're worship him, worshiping him according to the word of man, not according to the word of God. Keep going, Baba Kasha. Verse three. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So we've seen in verse five that the Moses described the righteousness, which is the law. So they're them being ignorant of God's righteousness, which is it being ignorant of God's law. Right. And going to establish their own righteousness by saying, oh, we just know what's right and wrong. You know, you feel it in your conscious, you know, in your heart was was right and wrong. But according to the Bible, your heart is is um, your heart is most is the most deceitful thing. You know what I mean? You can't trust what your heart said. You know what I mean, and the most high God knows your heart. And if your heart was to the most high God, you would do what he had commanded you to do. Right. Let's go to um, Romans 10 and 9, Bubba Kishore. Verse nine. Slug it. Verse nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him up, him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Keep on. Verse ten. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So here is saying. You know, all you have to do is by your mouth, believe in, in, in Yahweh Shai. All you got to do is call on the Lord. Right. So this is what Paul's saying. Let's see what Yahweh Shai is saying. Let's go to Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Right. So everybody that confesses with their mouth that they, you know, believe in Yahweh Shai, that don't mean that they're going to get into the kingdom of heaven. That's according to Yahweh Shai, right? Um, keep going on that. Verse, verse 22, verse 23, slot here. 22. Come on, 20, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have have we not prophesied in thy, in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Right, so they, they in the name of Jesus Christ, right, they cast out devils, they prophesy, you know, in, in their name. So we, you know, they, they have the Lord in their heart, right? Keep going. Kind of verse 33 and 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So Jesus Christ, so-called Jesus Christ is going, it don't matter if you confess with your mouth that, you know, you believe in Jesus Christ. You believe that he's your Lord and Savior. He said, that he's going to profess to them that I never knew you. Depart me, ye that work iniquity, and iniquity is sin. And we understand that sin is the transgression of the law. So if you're not keeping the law, it don't matter what you say out your lips. Right? Let's go to Romans 6 and 1, Bubba Kishore. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may be... A may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein right so even though we're in grace right that's what they're going to say we're in the grace period what the grace period is when yahweh shah had died and until he returns and in that grace period we have to repent we have to turn back to these law statutes and commandments so now that we are in this grace right and we're not under the judgments of the law Right. So if we um, if I have set, let's say we see a brother have commits adultery. Right. Um, according to the to the to the judgments of the law, he has to get stoned to death. He's not in that. So all of us should have been stoned to death. None of us should be here right now for the sins that we committed, even from breaking the Sabbath before we came into this truth. So we shouldn't even be here. But this is what the grace period is about. It's about, you know, hearing the 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 word of the shepherd, you know, as the sheep. Um Slot. As the sheep, you know, we hear the shepherd and we run to the shepherd and we follow the shepherd. Right. So all of us was in sin. Right. And now that we're in grace, shall we continue in sin? Because we're in the grace period. God forbid. And that's your that's your beloved Paul that's telling you this. Yaquayam, you had a point. Consolakia, like you said, uh, repent because um, Christians love to say that, you know, uh, there's not one that hasn't sinned, right? And that's the whole point, man. It's not about who hasn't sinned, like you've shown. It's, it's, we all sin. It's about not sinning no more, right? And I'm going to just read this precept to just tie it in, right? This is the book of John, chapter 5, verse 14. Afterward, Yahweh Shai findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come up unto thee right so that's that's the whole point right it's just saying so no more because because it's better that you never found out the truth than for you to know the truth and then turn away from the truth right so when the truth is we got to keep these law statutes commandments the truth is the law right let's go to romans 6 and 15 like the romans verse romans 6 and 15 what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace god forbid right it's saying that we're not under the law right we are under the law regardless right this is the misunderstanding of paul's writings we're not under the law because we're not under the judgments of the law right like i said we should have been dead if we was going according to the law because according to the law you die if you commit adultery according to the law you get you die if you break the sabbath so we have to keep the law. It's, it says, shall we sin because we're we're not under the law? So it's like saying, shall we shall we not keep the law because we're shall we not keep the law because we're not under the law? No. 
Because we're under yeah. Greece. Right. So, according according to Christianity, the Bible is contradicting itself, right? And if and if the Bible is contradicting itself in one area, we have to look at the whole Bible because the whole Bible will have to contradict itself, right? Because somebody's a liar or somebody's misunderstanding what's being written, right? Let's go to Romans three and thirty one, Bible the show. Romans chapter 3 verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. See, it's just because we call Lord, Lord, just because we have faith in in, in, in Yahushua HaMashiach. I mean, do we just cast it away? Do we write it off and we don't need this no more or it's no longer good? No, God forbid. We establish this law according to Paul, right? Let's go to um, Romans 7 and 12, Bubba Kishore. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Right. So we need to be holy. We need to separate ourselves. Those who love the world is the enemy of God. So in order to not love the world, you have to separate yourself from the world. Right. So we need to be a holy people. You Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. And the only way for us to be holy is by keeping the law because the law makes us holy. Right. And, and it's just and it's good. So why do you want to get rid of a just and a good thing? Let's go to um, verse 14, Baba Kishore. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Keep going. Verse 15. For that I for that which I do allow, slock it. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I that do I. See, the, the law isn't the problem. It's your flesh that's the problem that's keeping you from wanting to keep the law. Because right here, Paul said that he wants to keep the law, but he can't because his flesh is making him do things that he hates to do. Right. So that's what's going on today. Um, our flesh keeps us from keeping this law. We want to go out on the Sabbath. I mean, we want to go buy something to eat or, or you know, we want to celebrate Christmas and birthdays. I mean, that's a fleshly desire. That's being of the world. Right. But we need to be in the spirit because the law is spirit. And the only way to be in the spirit is by keeping these law, statutes and commandments. Let's go to verse 21. Brother Kishore. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Or I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Right. He delights after the law of God in his inward and in his spirit. He wants to do it. Keep going. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So there's another entity in him that's keeping him from keeping these laws. And that's Satan. Right. Satan is trying to sift him out of this thing, trying to not allow him to keep these law, statutes and commandments. So that's exactly what's going on. Our flesh automatically wants to do what it wants to do. But the thing is, our people are not being raised into keeping these laws. And that's why it's being it's, it's hard. It's harder and it's easier. Right. To be deceived by another nation to not keep these laws, because that's exactly you know, we we've been lost, you know, our, our inheritance. Our heritage has been taken from us, which is these law, statutes and commandments. So the devil, who is a so-called white man who created Christianity, right, to to colonize and exploit you so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. They built this doctrine to keep you from from keeping the law. You don't even know the law to understand why what you're not keeping. You know, you blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. So so for them to tell you, you don't have to keep it. It's like, oh, good. It's something that I don't got to do. But they make sure that you keep the laws of the white man, though. Right. So y'all follow. The laws of the United States and the laws of the so-called white man that he put against us. But y'all can't follow the laws of God. Y'all true power. And y'all wonder why y'all are abandoned. Y'all don't have a God. You know, we these things are happening to us. And y'all such a cursed people. Right. Let's go to Colossians 2 and 14. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us 
which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, to right, his cross. This, this is this is their favorite thing. See, they'll pull the scripture and they'd be like, look, here you go. You ain't got to keep the law no more. Close the book, right? But let's go to Galatians 2 and 17, Bubba Kishaw. Galatians. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So that's basically saying that the laws has is, is been nailed to the cross with, with Christ is basically saying that Christ is a minister of sin. You no longer have to keep the law and, and sin is the transgression of the law. So he's son, so so it would it would be if if we're saying that the laws is done away with and has been nailed onto the cross, we're saying because Christ had died on the cross for us, we can now go and do whatever we want. And and that's God forbid. Christ is not the minister of sin. I mean, Christ said, you know, we're going to get there. Um, let's go to Galatians 3 and 13. But because so like you had a point okay. just to add. Right. Because when you brought out Colossians uh, 2 and 14. What they don't notice, right? It says that the ordinances was against us. Why? Because the ordinances within the law, that's what ordinances is, right? It's like a statute that's to tell you what happens when you break the law, right? And that's why the ordinances was against us, right? The ordinances, it says Deuteronomy 28 and 15, if you don't keep these laws, these are the ordinances that will come upon you, right? right. This is the ordinances that need to happen to you when you break the law. Right. And we still are. We still, you know, we still are curses. We still are under these curses. Right. But. You know. This is just this is just misunderstanding. You know, Paul. Paul is really these writings of Paul are used as a stumbling block for our people. Okay. Um, let's go to Galatians. Did we read three and 13? Bubba Kishaw, let's read three and 13. Like it. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. So this is the same thing that goes right along with Colossians, right? This is this is also another scripture that they'll go to to say that the laws have been nailed on the cross with Yahweh Shah. Keep going. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Right. So we got to understand what this is talking about, right? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. So let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. So these are the curses, right? That that Christ is is redeem will is redeeming us from, right? So who it says, let's go back. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So we see that the curse of the law is Deuteronomy 28 and 15, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hanging from a tree, right? So he Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Who is the us, right? Let's go to um Isaiah 43 and 1, Bubba Kishaw. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he hath and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. So we see that the most high Yahweh, he's the ultimate redeemer, right? And that Jacob, right? Oh, Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. So this is the us. Right. And and um, in Galatians 3 and 13, when it says Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 14. Bubba Kishore. Slack, I got a New Testament precept to go hand in hand with that. Bring it up. Right. The book of Acts. Right. Chap chapter five and verse thirty one. Right. It says that exact same thing that you just read in Isaiah. Right. Um, 
This is the book of Acts chapter 5. Matter of fact, I'll start at verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Right? Uh -huh. The same thing you're saying. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Right? Uh -huh. Literally saying the same exact thing. So, so we see, okay, why haven't we been redeemed yet, right, from these things? It's because when you when you take a look at Abraham, when the, when when the um, the promise was given unto Abraham, the promise wasn't fulfilled until four hundred years later when when Moses got the law. So the new covenant, I mean, the old covenant was promised to Abraham, but we never entered into that old covenant until Moses built up the four the the twelve pillars and the altar and sprinkled sprinkled the blood onto the people and onto the law and he read the laws out to the people so we see just because christ already uh, already died for us doesn't mean that we had entered into this new covenant yet these prophecies still have to unfold there's things that still have to be done in order for us to have these laws written in our heart in order for us to be in the land right in order for, for us to be in the new covenant even though the purchase was made we never received the item yet it's like ordering something on amazon i order something right now it's already purchased that doesn't mean i have the item in my hands yet right let's go to isaiah 44 and 6 bubba kashar come perfect analogy it's isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6 thus saith the lord the king of israel and his redeemer the lord of hosts I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. There's no God with the most high God. The most high has is our ultimate redeemer. And he's and he doesn't get up off his throne. I mean, that's that's like um, the owner of the business, you know, getting going and doing some work. No, he got workers for that. You know what I mean? So the most high is using whoever he wants to use to fulfill his will. And he's going to use our big brother, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai to redeem us from this captivity right once we repent and we see that that judges was always raised whenever we went off there was somebody who was raised up to get us back in order and when we got back in order we got you know brought out of this captivity and that's what's going to happen we got to come back to these law statutes and commandments we got to be obedient to the most high in order for him to turn back to us right let's go to um isaiah 53 chapter chapter 2 Uh, so like Isaiah 40, 53, verse 2. Come on, Isaiah 53, chapter 53, and verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. No, nah, that's not the right one. Isaiah 53, verse 2. Oh, um, so like, that is it. I'm looking at verse 1. So like. Come on, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Keep going. Verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor nor comeliness, and when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. All right, this is this is getting into keep going. Verse three, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So this is this is in context is talking about Yahweh Shai, right? And he was rejected of men, right? And this is why the faith was emphasized so much into the New Testament, is because in the land we was already keeping the laws. I mean, so-called Jesus Christ, he was going through affliction, he was going through getting prosecuted because he was healing people on the sabbath he was going to the temple and he was ministering at the temple on sabbath days so this is you know our people was was you know um prosecuting him and, and persecuting him because because he was you know according to them he was breaking the law right so keeping the law we didn't have to emphasize that on our people they already knew that having the faith in Yahweh Shai, this is what they didn't have they didn't believe that he was the messiah so this is why you know, Paul had to go around and emphasize having this faith, right? Keep going. 
God. Verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Keep on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the, ch the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Right, we are healed with his stripes because we have a grace period, and ultimately all of Israel shall be saved. Right, so because he took these this chastisement, I mean, because he was the land for the slaughter, we we no longer have a temple to to go and sac um to give an offering for our sins. So Yahweh Shah was the ultimate sacrifice to get us a, a a time period to come back to who we are and come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. Keep going. Come. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Because we went and we want to do our own thing. We want to do contrary to these commandments. Keep going. We're going to we're actually going to read this whole chapter. It's, it's 12 verses, so let's run through this. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. All right. He was he was afflicted. He was the lamb to the slaughter. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Keep going. Verse eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For he would for the transgression of my people was he stricken. For the sins of my people was he stricken, but shall we continue in sin? God forbid. Keep going. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had not he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. He he did nothing to receive to, to deserve to get stricken. He didn't do anything to that that was um punishable by death, right? But because of our sins, right? He took that. He got put to death because of the things that we was doing, because we deserve to get put to death. Keep going. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. All right, keep going. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He's going to bear our iniquities. Keep going. Verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Right, because Christ came to divide. He he came to set a, man, a father against his son, a mother against his against her daughter. I mean, Christ came to divide. He didn't came, come for peace. He came with a sword. Keep going. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with many transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession intercession for the transgressors. So, you know, this is also a cut to these um New Test Old Testament only because we see Yahweh Shah in this in the Old Testament and we see these things come to place in the New Testament. This prophecy, you know, has been um not all the way fulfilled because you know we still in our sin and we're still doing what we want to do as far as a nation as a whole. But him dying for our transgressions, this has happened, right? Let's go to um, Deuteronomy 21 and 22, Baba Kishore. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. Right. So let's go back to Galatians 3 and 13. Right. Curses everyone that hanging from a tree. So we see this in the law. And let's say that again. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree. Keep going. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled which the Lord thy God given thee for an inheritance. Right, because because of our sins, right, 
we're we defiled the land, right? But since Yahweh Shah, he got he got hung on a tree for our sins, the land will no longer be defiled, right? Let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter two and twenty one. Because Christ is a redeemer for Israel and for our transgressions where he's stricken and he was hung on a tree for our iniquities, right? First, First Peter 2 and 21. First Peter 2 and 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we that ye should follow his steps. And what was his steps? He was perfect in the law. So why why would we not follow him and be and strive to be perfect in his law? Keep going. To 25. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his in his mouth. Right. It was 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened, threateneth, threateneth not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by those stripes ye were healed uh, yeah. for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd shepherd and bishop of your souls right because we understand that two-thirds of our people got is going to die right so so right now he's not looking for everybody to come and repent it's already prophesied and it's already written who was going to turn back you know so as the sheep and as a sheep, we're waiting to hear the voice of our shepherd because we're just wandering astray as a sheep. We don't we don't have anyone to lead us anywhere. Right. So when we hear our shepherd now, our ears perk up, we hear his voice. And now we follow the most high and we follow in his ways, which is the law, statutes and commandments, because he is perfect. He didn't teach anything contrary to that. Right. He loved his people. He was healing his people and he wanted us to keep these laws so we didn't receive you know, this ju the judgment from the Lord, like, like, you know, getting ran off to West Africa, then going to Babylon and serving our enemies. Right. But this is all prophecy that had to unfold. Yaquam, you got a point? Con, con, just to add to prove, like, it's already marked on who would repent and, and, and you know, uh, you know, who's going to get that deliverance, right? Who's going to get that salvation, right? Even Yahweh Shai said this himself, right? This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, and verse 12. That seeing day, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, right? This is Yahweh Shai talking about, you know, a lot, majority of the wicked people, of our people, and, and of course, everybody else, right? You're going to hear this and not understand it, right? You're going to see and not perceive what's going on, right? But it says, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Right. So Yahweh Shai literally saying, like, I'm not here for everybody to be forgiven. Right. It's literally letting you know it's, it's already predetermined who's going to be forgiven and who's going to be saved. Right. And of course, and of course, as he just displayed right here, it's those that have turned from their sins, those that have been converted. Because what does the book of Psalms say? The law is perfect. And that's what converts the soul. Okay. Yeah. And 4 and 11, let me get this. It says, and he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So we know that the most high cover of our ears and he cover of our eyes. But some, you know, his elect are not going to have their ears and their eyes covered. As soon as most of these brothers, you know, I'm sure the brothers on this panel right now, as soon as we heard this truth, we jumped on it. We got magnetized to this. We didn't waste any time. Right. So that's because our ears wasn't covered and our eyes wasn't covered. It was the right time for us to come into this thing. Right. And at less at any time, they should be converted. So these two thirds are not supposed to get converted. Right. And their sins should be forgiven them. He don't want all these people. He doesn't want everybody to be forgiven for their sins. Why? Because prophecy has to unfold. The Most High God, this is his movie and the script is already written and we can't edit this thing. Right. Um, let's, let's go to um, Galatians 4 and 4 and in 1 Peter 2 and 21 it's a lot 1 Peter 2 and 21 um, to 25 off Peter is, is reiterating is Isaiah 53 right 
because suffer for us leading this example you should follow his steps who did no sin neither was God found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to to him that judges righteously who is own self bear our sins in his in his own body on a tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness whose stripes you were healed and when we read isaiah 53 right this is talking about the same exact thing right it says he was rejected of men you mean he got he was stricken for us so everything in this new testament is really just reiterating the old testament and when you when you read the Old Testament, you know, we already know who the Israelites are, according to the Old Testament. We know, you know, that they they receive salvation, that, you know, we have to keep these law, statutes and commandments. So when we transition, trans transition into this New Testament, we have to keep in mind what happened in chapter one to, to chapter 53 to even start at chapter 54. So if you don't understand chapter one and 50, chapter one to 53, there is no way you can understand or keep up with what's going on here. All right, let's go to Galatians 4 and 4, Brother Kishore. Okay, Galatians 4, chapter 4, and verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Keep on. Verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So he's coming to redeem them that's under the law, right? And, you know, Christians will say, oh, um, you know, we have we have Peter and we have James talking to the Israelites. But Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Right. But and, and the Gentiles don't have to keep the law. Right. That's what that's what he'll say. Keeping the law is only for the Israelites. But when you when you look at who who was really sent to the Gentiles, Peter was sent to the Gentiles. Right. So Peter taught that you have to keep the law. So let's go to um, Acts 15 and 24, Brother Kishore. Acts 15 and verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain, certain, certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law. To whom we whom we gave no such commandment. Right. So here we go again. So let's go, let's go up real quick. Um Simon. Let me see if I find this. This is Paul, right? This Paul is getting rebuked, right? So let, let's just read that again, Bubba Verse 20, verse 24. For, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, we, ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. Right. So keep going. Verse 25. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord. To send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Right. So we got Barnabas and we got Paul, you know, he's teaching to not keep these commandments in it and to not get circumcised. Right. So we see in the in, in the Bible that it's um, open rebuke is better than secret love. So in order to put that in the Bible, you have to give us an example of that. Right. So let's get into the example. Let's go to Acts 16 and 1. Because he said that the um, he, he never commanded us to get circumcised or keep the law. Let's see. Acts chapter 16, verse 1. And came he to Derbe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed. But his father was a Greek. Right. So so automatically, you know, unlearned people would say, oh, he was a, a Greek. Right. But that calling him a Greek is like calling him American. You know, there's no nationality of, of, of Greek because the real the real people who, that was the Greeks were the um the Minoans. The Minoans right. But the people that's in there now are the Edomites. Right. So you can't if, if anything, you know, if he was a Greek, he would he would be. 
um, a so-called Minoan, but that's you got to emphasize. So so being American. Right. You would think that you're automatically a native Indian or you're native to the land. Right. But you have multiple nationalities here. So to call someone a Greek, there's multiple races living in the land of Greek because because we had Hellenization period where. You know, the Greeks, the Greeks, they went and they conquered lands and they they subjugated the people to their customs and their ways of doings. And they stopped us from calling ourselves Jews. They stopped us from keeping the Sabbath and these things. So to say that he was a Greek doesn't mean you would have to show his nationality, you know, according to um to a biblical nationality. You know, a Greek is just a place. Keep going. It's a lot. But, it's a lot. but Timotheus is an Israelite. Right. Keep going. Slokian, verse 2, which was well reported of, of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they all for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Right. So he Paul just what they were just saying in ver um in Acts 15 that I didn't tell y'all to circumcise y'all so or to keep the law, right? But you see right in the next chapter that Paul is circumcising someone and he's in the presence of the Jews, right? But if if Timotheus wasn't a, a Israelite, then why would they be forcing him to circumcise himself? It's because the, the Israelites and the Jews knew who Timotheus was, they knew he was an Israelite, so Paul had to get him circumcised, right? So we see them Paul teaching. That we don't have to keep the that we don't have to get circumcised, and then now we see him actually circumcising somebody, right? Let's go to um Acts 21 and 18, Bob Kishore. Acts chapter 21 and verse 16. Aaron went Slocky verse 18. And that and the day following Paul went in with us unto James and all the elders were present. Right. So, so yeah, everybody around Paul is about to get rebuked. Go ahead. Verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, thou seest brother, how many thousands of Jews there are, which believe and they are all zealous of the law. They are zealous of the law. These Jews believe they have the faith and they are zealous of the law. Faith and works go hand in hand. Keep going. And they were informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews, all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. See, Thanks. the Jews, the Jews that are amongst the Gentiles. Right. So. So, you know, this is a whole nother topic, but these things you got to keep in your head. Right. These Gentiles that Paul is going to talk to are Israelites that's living amongst them. And Paul went and taught these these Israelites to forsake Moses. Right. So when they say that, oh, James and Peter was talking to the Israelites only to keep the law, not to the Gentiles. And Paul went to the Gentiles. Here you see that Paul went to the Jews that were amongst the Gentiles. And and he's getting rebuked because they told Paul was teaching them to forsake the laws of Moses, which you, you got a point real quick. You got for you. Con, just to, just to, just to prove it real quick because this is what the uh the the uh you know the people said to Yahweh I believe it was the Pharisees when he was talking about he's going to a place where they can't find him right this is the book of John chapter 7 and 35 then said the Jews among themselves whither will he go that we shall not find him will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles right so just the you know, nail on the point, right? These are Gentiles, right? This is who he sent to the, the, the sinners of our people. The sinners of our people would be considered Gentiles. That's that's what the scriptures would consider them, right? Right. That's a diaspora, right? Come, so yep, that dispersed. So let's go to 11 real quick. Um, Acts 11 and 18, but stay on um, Acts 21, what we can show. And this is Acts chapter 11 and verse 18. When they heard the, these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, 
Then God, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Oh man, we got the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Let's see. Keep going. Verse nineteen. Now they which are were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Right, because we see Phoenice, Cyprus, and Antioch. If you if you read the history of what's going on here, these were all Hellenized places. Right, these were conquered by the Greeks. Right, keep going. Come on, verse twenty, and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, Grecians, pre preaching the Lord Yahweh. Went to the Verse. Grecians. What's the Grecians? Let's get into this real quick before we move forward. It's a Hellenist, a one who imitates the manners and customs of the worship of the Greeks and the use and use the Greek tongue used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. Right. So no matter what, who it was, whether it was Paul, whether it was Peter, whether it was James, keeping these laws wasn't going to actual Gentiles. It was going to Israelites that was dwelling amongst the Gentiles and acting like the Gentiles. Let's go back to Acts 21 and verse 20. Let's go back to 20. Verse, Acts 21 and verse 21. 20. Yeah, 21. Salaki. And, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, See, thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Verse 21. And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Right. So you're talking to Paul. Oh, this is what you're talking about. Go ahead. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and that and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing nothing are nothing all these things that you you have informed concerning all this is nothing keep going but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law Oh man, we got we got we got we got Paul walking orderly and keeping the law. So why if he if Paul is keeping the law, why are why is he teaching to not keep the law? It's not that he's teaching it, and and, and there was times when he did, and he got rebuked for that because we see that open rebuke is better than secret love, and we should, we have an example in the Bible of somebody getting rebuked in this, right? But why would he be going teaching that he ain't got to keep the law, but he over there circumcising? You know, Timothy is, and he over here keeping the law himself. Keep going. Come. Uh, verse 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strang strangle, and from fornication. All right, because that's what, that's, you know, we'll see that, um, Paul, Paul taught that all you have to do was um, keep from idols, from blood, strangling, and fornication, right? Because they didn't have a, a, a temple to sacrifice for their sins. So um, he, he was teaching that these are all the things that you got to do, but this isn't all the things that you got to do, right? Keep going. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification and so that an offering should be offered for every one of them. All right, because they were still in sin. Keep going. Verse 27. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. Paul got his got hands laid on him because he out there teaching contrary to keeping these laws, right? He lucky, you know, because according to the to the to the command, um, according to Yahweh Shah, those who keep the least of my commandments and teach men so, they shall be least in the kingdom. 
and Salat. Does anybody got that where it says Paul was the least in the kingdom? Let me see. Salat, yeah, I can get it real quick. Um, he says he's the least of the apostles, I think. Yeah, First Corinthians 15 and 9, Bubba Kishore. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Right. So Paul so Paul was persecuting people, but he also was teaching the you know that you ain't gotta keep these least of these commandments, right? You ain't gotta get circumcised, you ain't gotta, you know, there was things he was saying that this is all you have to do when that wasn't all they had to do. So we understand that Yahweh Shah said those who are you know teach the commandments um who keep the commandments and teach men so they he will be the least of the kingdom and i'm not saying that paul is is going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven because paul he corrected himself and he went and he taught that everybody had to keep these commandments he went and was circumcising his people right so he had just like us i mean it's a learning process paul he was prosecuting his people right for following yahweh shai so you know he he feels as though he's the least of the apostles due to doing that, right? But he had to grow in this thing as well. You got yeah. a point, Yaquayam? Khan, and also, right, not only was he doing that, by also teaching brothers that they don't got to keep the law, right, or if you allow people to do that, then that makes you also a murderer anyway because you're not loving your brother. Yahweh Shai says he that don't not love his brother, right, as well as a murderer. So, you know, through the spirit, you know what I'm saying on both sides this is why he had to be corrected and then like you said like Romans 3 and 11 right after he got rebuked right after he took that correction you see him laying stress to the law obey the law because because this is serious man like he, you get your, you get hands on for teaching that you ain't you ain't got to keep this law right let's go to um let's go to James 4 and 11 Bubba Kishore James chapter 4 and verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. All right. So if you read that in the NLT, it says, don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's laws. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. Right. So uh -huh. when Christianity, they'll say, you know, oh, they was he only the Israelites have to keep the law. And that's that's. Your job isn't to judge whether or not you got to keep the law. Your job is to keep the law. And no matter what, it was never for the heathens, right? This is only for Israel, right? Let's go to, um, and this is James. This is so-called Jesus Christ's brother telling you that it's your job to keep the law, right? Let's go to um, Matthew 18 and 16 because, because we got Paul, right? So Christianity will build their doctrine on Paul because... This is who they really follow. Right. And, you know, we need at least two witnesses in this thing to actually um, solidify a situation. Let's see that. Let's uh, Matthew 18 and 16. But we can show Matthew chapter 18 and verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So in order for his words, for Paul's words to be established and for us to say this is an end all be all, right? We have to see that in a second witness. And Yahweh Shah is not speaking this of himself. He's actually getting this out of the law. Let's go to Deut Deuteronomy 19 and 15, what we can show. His book is lucky. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So we don't have a second witness that says we don't have to keep these laws, right? And in order to establish the matter, right, you have to have that second witness. And Christianity does not have that. But 
they're establishing a doctrine and teaching y'all that y'all don't have to keep these laws, statutes and commandments. And we have multiple witnesses from the prophets to the New Testament, from to Yahweh Shah telling y'all that you have to keep the law. So let's go to First Corinthians 1 and 12. Brother Kishaw. Just lucky. I was just about to say, because Khan, Yahweh Shai, he didn't come right to, to the fact that he, he said the law ain't done away with, and he said he's not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he also said that he's sent to the sinners. He's not trying to call the, the righteous. So obviously he's talking about the sinners of Israel. That's who he came to call to repent, right? So of course, this is when Paul says he's going to the Gentiles. This is who he's going to, right? Sinners of Israel, man. Because because uh, the somebody that's not sick don't need a doctor. It's only the sick that needs a doctor. And though we need the law because somebody that's perfect in the law don't need the law. Right. So so prophecy had to get fulfilled. So we had to lose our heritage. We had to lose these law statutes and commandments. Um, Everybody in this world is sick. Right. So um, now us that's keeping the law and, and us becoming healthy. We're the ones that look sick in a world full of sick people. And we're really the healthy ones. Right. God, it's like it's first Corinthians chapter one and verse 12. Okay. Now, this I say that every one of you saith, I am, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Right? That's what Christianity do, right? Keep going. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Right. Is Christ divided? Is he is Christ going to say, OK, you follow Paul, you ain't got to keep these commandments. But if you follow me, you got to keep these commandments. Right. Was Paul crucified for you? So why are you going by the words of Paul? Right. Because you can't go to the words of Christ to say that these law statutes and commandments are done away with. But you can go to Paul and Paul was never crucified for you. But were you ever baptized in the name of Paul? Right. So are you a follower of Paul or a follower of Christ? Right. Let's go to. Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. Because we're going to see. We're going to see what Christ said. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. Oh, here we go. Right. So let's go back to 2 Peter 3 and 15. It says, um, let's go to 16. It says, and which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So they don't just go to Paul's writings and and go into error into their own destruction. Right. They also go into other scriptures like Matthew. Right. Where are we at? Matthew five and 17. All right. I'll read that again. What we could show? 17. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christianity, they say, oh, he came to fulfill the law. Christ came to fulfill the law. I can't believe that they literally go here when when in the same precept, it says, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Right. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He didn't come to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill prophecy. Keep going. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Right. Not one jot or one tittle, not one period, not one comma, not none of that is going to be erased. The laws are not uh, erased. Right. And so all be fulfilled until so these prophecies are fulfilled. And when these prophecies are fulfilled, we're going to be following the laws through our heart. We, we're going to naturally be doing this. It's going to be written in our inward parts. Keep going. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men, to, men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So go to Paul. We ain't got to keep the commandments. But Christ, the kingdom of heaven never came yet. Right. So. So you teaching that you ain't got to keep these commandments makes you a least in the kingdom. And that's you Israelites, because these heathens are just going to be, you know, hand 
servants and handmaids in the kingdom of heaven, right? Let's go to um, Luke 16 and 17, Bubba Kishaw. Because in, in verse 17, they'll say it's, it's done away with, right? But if you, why in verse 18 and 19, they go into not one jot a tittle is, is going to is is going to pass from the law to all be fulfilled. And 19 tells you that if you're teaching them that if you're teaching that you don't have to keep it, then you'll be called the least. Right. Because because they don't understand. They're not learned. Right. Luke 16 and 17. Come we'll sure. on. This is Luke chapter 16 and verse 17. It is easier and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. And earth ain't passed and earth ain't going to pass because because thy kingdom done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we see that the kingdom is going to be here on earth. So the earth is not going to pass. Yes, Babylon is going to get destroyed. Babylon is going to be a lake of fire. But we're going to get sent back into our land, our land filled with milk and honey. Right. So this world will not be destroyed. So somehow Christianity builds their doctrine, you know, on Paul's writings. Right. So. Let's go to John 14 and 15. Let's just get a couple. Let's get a couple precepts to show what Christ said about keeping these laws. Right. To see if y'all going to go and follow Paul or if y'all going to go follow um, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. And that's going to put what position you're going to have in this kingdom for you blacks and Hispanics. This is John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love so-called Jesus Christ, keep his commandments. It's that simple, right? But the thing is, our people don't love Yahweh Shah. They actually hate him and they hate us. And they don't hate us because it's us. It's because they hate who came before us, who which was Yahweh Shah, right? Let's go to first John. First John five and three, Bubba Kishaw. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments ain't hard, man. It's, it's wearing 100 percent fabric. Why? Because if you look into the scientific thing, if you look into science, you know, um, there's a there's a frequency that comes out of a fabric, out of material, even out of your body. Right. There's a frequency out of everything. Right. So if you wear certain fabrics, it is made to keep you oppressed. Right. To keep your energy and your and your um, what's that? your potential oppressed right ph balance too con and you get sick off of, off of certain materials it, it weakens your immune system but when you wear wool and linen because when you look into the law of wearing 100 percent cotton that you know they talk about don't wear mixed fabrics you know wool and linen is very big into the fabric that we use that's the best fabric that we can have right and that has a frequency of five thousand. when you go to the doctors and you're sick you go lay down onto a doctor bed you feel better automatically it's many times that i've went through that right when you put linen onto a bandage a linen patch onto your wound it heals your wound faster so it gives you energy you don't need an energy drink all you need to do is wear the right material keep these laws of god and you'll feel better and you'll move better love your brother right honor your mother and your father don't have no idols because these idols don't profit you nothing you know only the most high god is going to profit you on keep keeping his commandments um don't commit adultery. Don't have sex with another man's wife. There's more women than men out here. Why do you need to go and take another man's wife? Right? Um. These, these things are, are, are perfect. The law is perfect and it's to keep you perfect. Not to be perfect in the, you know, um, in the sight of men or none of that. It's to keep you perfect in the eyes of the Lord and to keep your body. Your, your body is his temple. So in order to keep this thing as clean as you can and as pure as you can, the only way you could do that is by keeping these commandments you got a point bro i was just gonna add right it's, it's practical like you said the law is not grievous as the bible says it's, it's it's really really good for us really healthy right on a carnal level as much as a spiritual level right don't eat shrimp, shrimp pork crab and lobster what do our people suffer high blood pressure diabetes gout all these things that come with eating the stuff god told us not to eat it's real practical, man. It's real good for us on every level. Our mind, body, and spirit. But our people think they know everything. And our understanding has is nowhere near the Most High's understanding. So it ain't for you to understand why. It's just for you to do it. You know what I mean? And, and Lord willing, uh, you don't never experience why you have to keep it. 
right? Let's go to First John two and four, Bubba Kishaw. First John chapter two and verse four. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you're a Christian past pastors, it's a lot. <clears throat> if your Christian pastor is teaching you that you ain't got to keep these commandments, he that say he know God and he know this Bible and he not keeping these commandments, according to the Bible, he is a liar and the truth ain't in him. So why why are you looking for a truth out of somebody who can't bear the truth? There's no way he can have the truth if he's not keeping these commandments. And the men that you see on this board right here, the men are, that's on these highways and byways teaching this Bible, keeping these commandments, they teaching you a truth. This we're not just going out there because, you know, like I can't see myself doing something for the hell of it, man. Yeah, you know I mean, let's just go stand on the corner and yell at people all day. There's a reason why we do this, man, is because we see the works of the Lord. We see the truth. We live in this Bible, man. Our lives are biblical, man. So and so when you see us, you mean we're not out there telling you something that, that we get paid to tell you. We're not a hired shepherd, right? We're not getting hired to go in and, and tell y'all to not keep these laws like how the Christian church does, right? Because according to Christianity, you ain't got to keep it, but you got to pay that 10% tithe, though. Salakia. We did the opposite. We bought the truth and gave it out for free, right? We bought the truth with our life, with our life. Like you said, we lived this, right? We bought it. We gave our all for this, and we giving it out for free. Huh. And and how did we buy it, right? That's getting rid of all of our mixed fabrics and buying 100% clothing, right? That's buying sewing machines and fringes to put in our garments. That's buying the material to make tassels, right? That's taking all the abominable foods out of our fridge and filling our fridge up with, with, with lawful with lawful food, huh? You know what I mean? That, there's so much that we had to turn around. Like, our... Our rooms, man, I'm sure all these brothers' rooms was a lot different before they came in the truth. You know I mean, now we don't got no 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 idols hanging up on the wall. Now everything we got is laws on the doorposts, right? We got we got incense burners with frankincense and myrrh, which is a beautiful smell that I never smelled in my life, right? But uh, when you know coming into this truth and dealing with the brethren, like-minded brothers, and learning, you know, learning the ways, right? We see that it's so much peace, man. It's so much peace in our lives, no matter how much we go through, because all of us are going through it. You know what I mean, but only through Yahweh Shah, you know, they'll say, um, what scripture is that where um, I can do all things? Let's go there. Um, Philippians 4 and 13, but we can show. It's Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ with which strengthens strengtheneth me. So Christianity will go here. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me, but keep these law, statutes, and commandments. They could do everything. They could buy a car, they can get rich, right? They can go and, and do all type of abominable things. Everything in life they believe that they can do through the strength of Christ, right? But they can't keep these law, statutes, and commandments. They'll tell you nobody can be perfect. Nobody in the Bible was perfect until you start bringing out multiple people in the Bible that was perfect. Now they confound it and they want to run. They don't never want to deal with the truth of this Bible. And when we out there, they don't never want to deal with us, man. They'll come and they'll they'll say, "Oh, this book, chapter, verse." We'll go to it and we'll we'll show them that their understanding is wrong, right? Showing them through other verses, precept upon precept, line upon line, to get an understanding of what this is talking about, right? Then they'll go storm out, come back, run, running two and a half miles back, right, with that precept to not discuss it, just to yell at us, right, and, and say that we got strife and animosity towards somebody. I mean, all we try to do is break strongholds that is upon our people doing the will of the Lord. Go ahead, bro. Plus, lucky, I was just going to add, right, like you said, they'll say you can't be perfect, right, and in the same breath say they can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. Well, Christ himself said what? He said, be ye therefore perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. 
So you could do all things through Christ. You could certainly do what he told you to do. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. And again, like we brought out earlier in the book of Psalms, that's how you be perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, right? And that's just the soundness of this Bible, man. That just is, 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 is well-rounded. You see it all throughout in, in anywhere you bring it out. Except when you go to the misunderstandings of Paul. <laughs> right. Right. Which, which the Christians, again, like you said, hang their hats on. And, and it ain't hard, man. These commandments is not hard, man. Sometimes we slip a, mom, a man going to fall seven times. You know I mean, but get back up and search for the Lord ten times harder, man. It's, it, we're going to fall. You know I mean, we're not perfect, but we can strive to be perfect. We can be. You know I mean, we can be blameless men because because when you when you when you do something and you repent for that, the, you know, a man can't hold that against you again. You already repented for that as long as you're not doing it over and over again. I mean, we we weren't we're not perfect. We lived a life full of sin. You know, we got a jacket longer than, you know, than a longer than a a, 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 a food stamp receipt. You know, what I mean, you go to the grocery store spending food stamps, seven, eight hundred dollars on some food stamps. That receipt long as heck. That's our sins, man. You know what I mean, so to come into these couple years that we've been in this trying to balance this thing. You know what I mean, we really striving to do this. Right. And somebody that really loves the most high is, is that's the only way. And only through the strength of Hamashiach Yahweh is the only way that we can really do this and turn from the ways that we were living. So like I got a precept for that too. Khan, like you said, man, we don't we 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 say strive for perfection, right? We read about David, right? And the scripture says that right, he was perfect. Right? right? His heart was perfect with the Lord, right? And uh, uh, David did a sin that was punishable by death. He committed adultery, right? But guess what? Like you said, a just man falls seven times and get up, right? This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David, his father. Wow. So that, you know, dealing with Solomon, he being king now, you know, David already made his transgression of, of committing adultery. That already came to pass. And now with with Solomon being king, it's showing that David, his father, was his heart was perfect with the Lord. So you can't say this was before that he committed adultery. Exactly. Oh, praises. Let's go to Titus 3 and 5, Bubba Kasha. It's Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So according to his mercy, he has saved us by the washing of re regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, the, you know, we get... You know, we come back and we pay for our sins every time we come back, but we got a chance to make it right. And this is our last captivity. So this is the time that we got it. This is the last, you know, window of opportunity right here. So and with the renewing of the Holy Ghost, how do you get renewed by the Holy Ghost? Let's go to Acts 5 and 32. Brother Acts 5 verse 32. And we are his witness of these things, and so is the so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. You get the Holy Ghost, you get the renewing of the Holy Ghost, right? When you obey the most high. How do you obey the most high? What did he tell you to do that you have to obey? Because when you, when you obey somebody, it's because they told you something. What is it that God told us to do? God told us and commanded us to keep these law, statutes, and commandments. And that's the only way that you can get renewed by the Holy Ghost. Those Christian pastors that say, oh, I'm, I'm in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is in the building. Ain't none of them keeping these law, statutes, and commands. They got the spirit of Satan in that thing, man. They got a spirit of deceiving in that thing. So if they ain't keeping these law, statutes, and commandments, they are a liar and the truth is not in them. Right? Let's go to um, Titus 1 and 16, Bubba Kishore.
Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. They profess that they know God, right? But they disobedient, man. They disobedient because they're not obedient to the laws of God. Right. And the only time is you can receive that Holy Ghost is when you're obedient to the most high and his commands and every good work. They can't. You know, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. So just because you might think is right, don't mean that is right. It don't matter what you think. It, it, all the thing that matters is what the most High God ordained. Right. Let's go to Matthew 22 and 36. Bubba Kishore. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Keep on. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Right. So Christianity is say, oh, there's only two commandments that we got to keep is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. How do you love God is by keeping these commandments. Right. That's the first and great commandment, because in order to keep the commandments, you have to love God. Right. And the second is like unto it that sh shall th um, love thy neighbor as thyself. So in order. So all the commandments hang on these two commandments because all the commandments is about how to love God and how to love your brother, not committing adultery, not stealing from him, not, you know, loving God by not doing witchcraft, you know, by keeping these high holy days, by keeping the Sabbath, um, you know, loving your brother by, you know, by not committing murder, by, you know, not not putting usury upon him if his ass falls into a ditch you go help your brother and pick him up if he's unloading you know his stuff from the ass you you from the horse you go and you help him unload it you don't you leave the gleanings that you drop on the field when you're reaping when you're reaping your um your um your crops you leave what you drop for the poor you leave the corners of your fields you know you you don't touch them you don't reap that because you leave that for the poor this is how you love your brother how so when, when it says okay the first commandment is that that love the God with all your heart and all your soul. And the second is to love thy brother, the neighbor as yourself. What you need to be asking is, how do you love God? How do you love your brother? And all the commandments, it shows how to love God and love your brother. So when they tell you, oh, there's only two commandments that we got to follow. Well, obviously, there's more that we have to follow because you can't just say I love God and I love my brother. There's actions that you have to make. Right. So what are these actions? You got to really question these things. We question everything else, right? We question if 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 there's reptilians in the government, right? We question if there's aliens and life on other planets, right? We question how far the sun is from the earth, but we don't never question what the white man tells you. You just run with it, man. Let's go to um John 13 and 34, Bubba Kasha. Salakia, the same man that gave you Christianity told you not to obey the laws, right? The laws that told you to feed the poor of your people, right? Yet that same white man gave you that, right? Tell you it's illegal to collect rainwater. Right. That that puts drugs in your communities, that put guns in your communities so you could do witchcraft, so you could kill your people, man. The same the same man who came and cut your cut your full mother's stomach open and let and fed it to the dogs and the alligators, right? The same ones that whipped y'all on the back and had lesions that you see in these movies, man, in these pictures, because y'all never really lived it, man. And that's why y'all are so passive about it is because, oh, they never did it to me, but they did do it to you. They did it to your mother. They did it to your father, your brother, and your sister. But you so passive because you don't care about your people. And that's why we go out there and we snap on y'all. You know what I mean? It's not because, you know... Um, we want to snap on y'all because we want some drama. We want some smoke. No, man, because we love y'all. Y'all so hard headed, man. And the most high God is sending out us out there and having us using us as a hand to reach out to y'all because it's really the most high that's reaching out to y'all. And y'all just walking by like y'all don't give a damn. You know what I mean, this is unity between blacks and Hispanics. And this is what we need in the community. You know what I mean, unity. 
But since it's about the Bible and not about financial gain or building a financial platform or or unity on open up a corner or something, y'all don't want nothing to do with it. I mean, when it comes to loving each other, y'all don't want nothing to do with that. All right. And that's why two thirds of y'all got to go. And I agree. Let's go to John chapter 13 and 34. What we can show. John chapter 13 and 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Right. So now, oh, um, Christianity says, see, this was a new commandment, right? But let's really see about that. Let's go to 1 John 2 and 7, because 1 John 2 and 7, we'll show, because just like, just like Paul's writings, how they misunderstand that, right? They misunderstand these writings too. It ain't just Paul. They misunderstand the whole Bible. 1 John 2 and 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. No new commandment. But an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Right. So he said there is no new commandment, right? He said a new commandment I give unto you. Why? Because it's new to us, right? Because we never heard these things before. So when we when you coming up to something and you're like, yo, I got something to show you. This truth ain't new, but it's new to me, Right. So when he said I, a new commandment I gave to you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Let's see if it was in the beginning. Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 18. But we can show. Leviticus 19 and 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Right. This is the same thing that he just said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. John 13, 34, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And ye also love one another. It's the same thing that was in the old the old thing, in the old commandments. And it says, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you heard from the beginning. And this is the same commandment that he just reiterated in John here in Leviticus 19 and 18. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 16, Bubba Kishore. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may that I may have eternal life? So what do I have to do in order for me to get eternal life? Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? But there, there is none good but one, that is, Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Right. And our people come by and they say, yo, I'm good. Yo, let me show you something, bro. Can I have a conversation with you? Can I show you something? Nah, I'm good. There ain't You ain't good because there's only one that's good. But if you want to enter into life, because a lot of y'all dead, because you might not be dead now, but you're just preserved to be dead. Right. So in order for you to come and enter into the into into life. Right. Because we might not be living it up in BMWs and living in big mansions and all that. But it's the poor that's going to inherit the kingdom. So we understand that we don't want this stuff here because this place is not our rest, right? This is crumbs compared to what we're going to have in this kingdom. And we ain't out here for no crumbs, man, right? So if you want to enter into life, you got to keep these commandments. Come. So, Lucky, I, I can add to that. Come. Come, because they are dead, man. They 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 are dead, right? All right, I'm going to show them right here. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, and verse 16. The man that wander out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead uh -huh. right and that's where our people are our people are amongst the congregation of the dead right why because they don't have the law statutes and commandments right the book of deuteronomy 4 and 6 says our understanding and the sight of the nations and our wisdom is the law statutes and commandments right baruch 4 and 1 says that all that keep the commandments shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. And that's where our people is, man. Our people are dead spiritually, right? And they're suffering these curses, being killed, right? Physically, right? And, and, and just bringing children into death, man. Hey. All high. You know what I mean, our people just nodding off on the corner. They sleeping in tents all along. You know I mean, well, all praise to the most high that it's now these curses are coming upon these other nations because you got brothers waking up, man. It's a lot of work getting put in into this nation of Israel, not just in Sakari. Like I, I see all the work getting done in Sakari, not just Sakari Philly, because we could just talk about Sakari Philly. 
you know I mean, and show all the works that we do and all praise to the most high. You know I mean, this ain't for, for the sight of men. This is all for the Lord because we in these last days and we need to turn up. It ain't time to be sitting on the bench. Right. But when you look at as a whole, the community of Israel, those who are following these law, statutes and commandments and putting in this work, there is so much work getting put out there. And these curses are falling upon our enemies. Just look at Russia. Look at America. Look at Ukraine. Now they they killing each other now. Yeah, I mean, before you seen it was us killing each other. Yeah, you know I mean, now they over there shooting each other. All praise to the Most High, right? All praise to the Most High. I mean, they had us, oh, you know, begging for change on the corners before you get onto the highway or the boulevard, right? You know, you know. Now you see all Edomites. You know what I mean, they out there with the help me sign. You know what I mean, and and we over there telling them all praise to the Most High to their face without pitching a quarter at them. Let, um, keep going on. Um, Matthew nineteen and eighteen. What we can show? No, let's go back to seventeen real quick. Verse seventeen, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, right? Keep going. He saith unto him, Which Yahweh shall say. What I'll commandments? So he said, what commandments, right? So according to Christianity, Christ only got two commandments. Love your brother and love God. Let's see what else he said. Yahweh shall say, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Yeah. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. So now we got more than two commandments. We got more than just one new commandment here. So obviously there's a misunderstanding of the scriptures. Right. Because when you read the scriptures in, in entirety, it's not teaching that. Right. There's a misunderstanding that the that Christianity has. And it's not even that they misunderstand. They Some of these people really know they just using Paul as a stumbling block, as a way of error and throwing him in your face and cooling and, and isolating certain scriptures and closing the book. That's why they only read John 3, 16 and they'll read Romans 10 and Romans 11 and they'll dance around for the rest of the day. They do not want to get into this Bible. man. Let's go to. um. So, go ahead, bro. I'm about to say, so lucky I had to add to that, right? Because the Christian, the Christian church, right, is big on breaking those commandments he just gave, right? He, he said, that's why not commit adultery. Yahweh said, what about adultery? If you cannot leave your partner, lest it be for fornication. Yet you got the Christian church telling you, it's okay. you, they'll let you know it's okay to divorce, right? Just go to the courthouse, get your divorce, your bill of divorce. You see what I'm saying? These people, these people condone that. I literally just heard T.D. Jakes on, on, on a, a, a post, you know, talking about uh, God didn't let you keep with that person uh, uh, because he had somebody else waiting for you, right? Someone that that was going to elevate you. How God don't do that? When he said, when Yahushai said, let nobody put asunder what the Lord had brought together, right? Uh -huh. So these people literally are committing adultery, man. And, they, and they're causing our people to commit not only flesh adultery, but by breaking the law and serving these other gods, serving their father, the devil, the so-called white man, that's making them also be spiritual fornicators, man, spiritual adulterers. And, and the motto is come as you are, come high, right? Just come praise the Lord and give me your 10%. Come as a botsy boy, as a, as a, as a, um, sodomite, right? Come as a, come as a whore of, a, of a daughter of Zion. You know what I mean? The most high don't want that for all people, but they want you to come like that. Yeah. No, it's okay. You can enter into these doors. You won't get rebuked over here. It's all love. I mean, and let me tap that when we done over here. That's what passed the pork chop telling, telling our woman, man. Come on, let's go to um second John one and six, Bubba Kashuk. Second John chapter one and verse six. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Right. We gotta walk in these commandments, man. And I'm gonna bring out my last scripture. Because this is let's go to Revelation 22 and 14. Because Revelation 22 is the last chapter in the book. So we got the last book, right? And there's only what 22, 21 verses in here. Let's see what it say. What Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Don't let don't be deceived, man. 
don't get deceived by Christianity or by those who, who ever and stumble on these writings of Paul, man. I mean, because if you ain't keeping these commandments, you, you ain't got no right to this tree of life. Your name is not in that book. And you ain't entering to them gates of the city. You have to get born into that thing, man. I mean, we try and be telling our children, yo, you know, they used to be a race of so-called white people. Yeah, you know I mean, we try and live and reign a thousand years and, and talk about the, the things that happened in this past life. If you can't born into this kingdom, you can't do that. You know what I mean? We try and show the way, man. We try, we try and bring up, you know, be rulers in this kingdom, try and be great in the kingdom of heaven. You know what I mean, we we sacrificing our lives and our body today. I mean, doing two hour videos, going to the highways and byways for three to five hours twice a week. You know what I mean, putting out another set of videos. Right. This ain't commanded by the most High that we need to go on Internet and put out videos. We actually put in an overtime man. we put in an extra credit trying to get, you know, trying to get that good, good and faithful servant from the most high. man. Keep these commandments. And well, Kishaw, if anybody got some, please. Oh, let the people know. Yeah, I was just about to say, man, and we trying to mend our sins, man. You know what I'm saying? We not we trying to get the blood off our hands, right? Mm -hmm. We consider murders, man, if we don't do this, man. Your blood is on our hands if we don't do this, man. Right? So we trying to mend our ways while helping you mend your ways, man. That's that's just all it's about. And that's real building, man. Right? Like Hyman said, right, in one of his powerful uh, uh songs, man. Uh uh, how can I save us if we both want to sink and shit? You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to amend my ways, right? And after I learned and, and, and applied it and seen it, how it worked for myself, you see what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure I do it for my family because I love you too, man. And that's what a real brother's keeper does. Baba Kashaw, Kodami Allah, can you read 22 and 14 again? Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments, right? Keep going. Verse 15. For without our dogs, our, our dogs. If you ain't doing, if you ain't got these laws in your if you ain't got this in your life, man, you are a dog. Keep going. And sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Right, make up a lie, man, because that's what the Christian church have been doing to y'all. Keep going. I, Yahweh, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Yahweh has sent an angel to testify these things to keep the commandments so you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right? He sent an angel to testify these things unto you in the churches, and he ain't talking about the 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 Christian church or the Catholic church or the Islam mosque, right? Because the church is when, you know, two or more is gathered in his name. He's in our presence. And, you know, the church um, was was in the beginning, was in the wilderness. I mean, the church is going to be you're you going to see your teachers in a, on, on the street corners. They're not going to be hidden in, in, in the buildings anymore, man. Keep going. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and the morning star. Right, man. He said, he, he said, without these commandments, man, you're a sorcerer, whoremonger, a murderer, idolater. And whoever loveth maketh a lie, man. Kodamiala, you got any points to make? La'a. Yaquayam? La'a. Let me, let me bring out one more John. Cause, Cause it ain't easy. We ain't gonna sit here and say, "Oh, like we don't go through it." We keep these commandments, and and we also, you know, get chastised, chastised, you know. But if you're not getting chastised, you're not a child of God, right? Come. Um, Let's go to um, Matthew twenty four and thirteen, Bubba Kisho. Matthew chapter twenty four and verse thirteen. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right. So we got to endure this thing, man. It ain't going to be easy. We, I mean, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare our soul for temptation. Keep going. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then 
shall the end come. And that's why we put in this work. That's why we go to these highways and byways. That's why we put out these videos. That's why we go onto these, you know, onto these um, social media platforms and debunk Christianity and all that is because this has to go into all nations so that the end could come, man. And the end coming is the end of the rulership of the so-called white man, right? And it's going to be the the um us and rulership after that. We're going to take Esau by the heel. We're going to snatch him down from his high place. And we're going to bring him to this low place. And we're going to use him as stubble for the fire. And we're going to be a flame on him. And we're going to take over this world, man. Through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Right? So with that, we say, call up a lot like Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And Shalom. 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 Uh, what you know about waking up from a whole lifetime of living savage? Right. Spirit on you till you go to the highways and byways and bend them to the marriage. Right. Turn back or otherwise perish. Right. You ain't always got a bust a glass. Uh. But this here ain't for everybody. If you ain't with it, then get up the block. Crack your fucking head, leave a husky knot. We ain't all about love, nigga. You looking at ex gang members, ex convicts, and ex drug dealers. Yeah. Everything is a balance with us. When yeah. the teacher speak, it's a silence with us. Cause yeah. we real soldiers for your Howard child. Other false gods don't want no challenge with us. Uh. Islam and Christianity is the biggest drug. That's known to Jake. Right. Take heed before you OD and then bug out to a hopeless fate. The most high, he don't make mistakes. Uh -huh. We don't want to slice, we're going to take the cake. Yeah. We can't wait until the kingdom comes. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldiers. I'm on a block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. We can game up like soldiers. 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 We moving wiser than cobras. Sicarius, Lakosha, Nostra. Or I got